Hello and welcome to chair yoga. I had to turn on do not disturb there. All right. Welcome. How's everybody doing today? I hope you are well. So our class today is going to be some seated poses and some standing poses. Uh, we're going to be doing some back bends. Not big back bends, but some little back bends. So please um, use caution as always and don't move into anything too quickly or out of anything too quickly. Most injuries in yoga happen coming out of a pose, so please always be mindful um, to be careful as you exit a pose. And always remember to only move in ways that feel okay in your body. Nothing should cause any sharp or burning pain. If it does, stop doing it. Take as many breaks as you like during practice. Remember, this is your practice. I'm just here to guide you, offer suggestions, but you know what's um, okay in your body and what's not okay. And always listen to any medical advice um, before you listen to me. <laughs> All right, so let's take a minute to get centered. So really root down through the feet, lengthen the spine, the side bodies, maybe wiggle a little bit, feel that length come into the side bodies. Reach the crown of the head up, relax the shoulders down, lower the gaze or close your eyes and just take a minute to welcome yourself to your practice. This time of self-care Remembering that self-care is not selfish. And I think I have a little reading for our closing today about self-care. Notice the breath. Without manipulating it, just notice the breath. If you'd like to set an intention, a dedication, or a mantra for your class today, please take a minute to do that. Now we'll just take three of the slowest, deepest breaths you've taken all day. And we'll do in through the nose and out through the mouth. So go ahead and let your air out. Take a long, slow inhale through the nose. Feel the belly inflate. Slight pause at the top of your inhale. And then a long, slow exhale until you cannot exhale anymore. Two more like that. And just resume normal breathing. Notice if those three slow intentional breaths shifted anything in your being or calmed the central nervous system in any way. No judgment if it didn't. And then just gently blink open the eyes and we'll come forward to the edge of our chair. We're going to keep the hands on the knees. So we're going to do cat cow, but we're going to kind of, I invite you to focus on rolling to the front and the back of your sit bones. Okay. So the hands are going to stay here on an inhale. We're going to roll to the front of the sit bones, shoulder blades, draw back a little bit. And then on an exhale, we roll to the back of the sit bones and round the back and widen the shoulder blades. Inhale, roll forward and arch for cow. Exhale, roll back. 
Just flow with your breath at your pace. more. Chin lifts and lowers. Come on back to neutral. And we're going to take a figure four flow here. So remember your options with figure four. You have the option of crossing the right ankle over the left and then flowing that way. Or if it feels okay, bring the right ankle to the left knee and spread the toes wide and reach through the right heel. Perfect posture, spine long and straight, shoulders relaxed. Maybe the hands come to the seat of the chair and then we'll switch sides. So now the left ankle crosses the right ankle or the right knee. Spread the left toes, reach through that left heel. Strong, straight spine. And then we're just going to kind of flow from side to side. So that right hip is sort of externally rotated and just kind of a gentle, slow flow side to side, spreading the toes, reaching through the heel. So it's not a fast flow, just a nice, steady pace. Waking up the hips a little bit. One more time to each side. And relax the feet. We're going to bring the knees together. And actually, we're going to bring the feet about hip width distance apart. So there's a little bit of space between the feet. And I know you can't see my, my feet, but we are going to bring the knees together and the heels splay out to the sides and then the heels come in, the knees go wide. So we're flowing the knees and the feet, keeping the spine long and straight, but make sure the heels are moving in and out with the knees. When the knees are together, the heels are out. When the knees are wide, the toes are out and the heels are in. And just flow like that for a little bit longer. Good, one more. back to neutral, maybe bounce the legs a little bit. And then we're going to take a little quad stretch. So we're going to take the right knee to the side of, so we're on the edge of our chair, that will make it easier. So the right knee bends and the right foot comes back to the side of your chair. And feel that sensation in the right quadriceps, spine stays long and straight. And we're breathing. Good. Then bring the right foot back and the left knee bends down toward the floor. And we feel that sensation in the left quadricep, the front of the left leg. And we'll flow a little bit. So the right knee down right foot to the side of the chair, back through center, left foot back. Good. 
good. One more time to each side. center. Again, we're going to take the knees somewhat wide, not real wide, but a little wide. And we're going to do a forward fold flow. So we're going to draw the belly in and it's almost like a wave. So we're going to come forward, whatever that looks like for you. So it might be elbows on the knees. It might be hands down to the floor. The head hangs heavy. And then draw the belly in, round the back, and come all the way up. Round the back, flow down to whatever your forward fold looks like. Roll it back up. Roll it back down. And back up. And back down. And back up. And this time when we fold forward, we're going to hang out here. So maybe, you know, the hands come between the, the feet. Maybe not. Maybe you have a block. Maybe the elbows stay on the knees. <coughs> Wherever you are, let the head hang heavy. And enjoy this forward fold, this reset for the brain. Good, and we're going to roll up nice and slow. So it's almost like you're stacking one vertebrae on top of the next until the spine is straight and the head is up. All right, let's walk the feet back together. The knees are together. We're going to bring the back of the left hand to the outside of our right knee and the right hand reaches back for the chair. Spine is long and straight, low belly's drawn in. We're taking a twist to the right. Gaze can be back over the right shoulder to your right side wall or forward, whatever feels best in your neck. Slow, deep, even breaths. And nice and slow, just gently untwist, back to center. And we'll take the back of the right hand to the outer left knee. Left hand reaches back, draw the belly in, and find your twist to the left. Keep those knees together. And breathe. Feel how the breath impacts the sensation in your body. Still trying to inflate the belly on the inhale and deflate the belly on the exhale. and slow reverse back out and we're going to sit back in the chair so that our our posture is still nice and perfect but our back is resting on the chair and we're going to bring the arms up overhead feel all the length in the side body relax the shoulders down as you reach up through your fingertips and then bring the palms together on an exhale, lower the hands to the heart center. And then we'll release the arms down, out to the side, palms up. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Release them down, palms out. And arms out, palms up. And arms come up overhead, exhale, hands to heart center, and release. Couple more times. Good, release. 
release the arms, reach the arms out, palms up. Inhale the arms up overhead. We're going to interlace the fingers and then um, rotate the wrists so that the palms are facing up. And here's where our little back bend is going to come in. So we're going to lean on the back of the chair, draw the low belly in, root down through the feet, and find a little bit of a back bend, whatever that looks like for you here. And find a little breath, remembering the breath is the barometer. Good. Inhale it up. Exhale. Release the hands again. Extend the arms wide. Inhale it up. And try to interlace the other way. So it's probably the way that feels funny for you. So interlace the fingers the opposite way. Reach the arms up. Exhale. Root down through the feet. Belly in. And a little bit of a back bend over the back of your chair. And inhale it up and release the hands down. Let's take that one more time. Arms out and up. Interlace. Palms up. Back bend, whatever that looks like for you. And up. Hands down. Inhale, all the way up, interlace the opposite way, palms turn up, and find your back bend, and inhale it up, exhale, hands to heart center, good. All right, so now we're going to keep that same similar flow, but we're going to add, so arms extend out, palms up, inhale, arms overhead, Exhale, we twist to the right like we did before. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, arms up, interlace, little bit of a back bend. Inhale it up. Exhale, release. One more. Inhale, extend the arms wide and up. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, arms up. Interlace the opposite way. Palms come up. Root through the feet. Little back bend. Inhale it up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So just take a minute maybe to rest or just to notice how your body's feeling after that movement with the arms and the spine. And breathe, maybe call to mind your intention, your dedication or your mantra. We'll play with eagle arms. So the left elbow is going to come under the right elbow and either you grab opposite sh shoulders or the backs of the hands come together or the palms come together and then we're going to cross the right leg over the left leg. Stay there. Maybe you get the full twist where the right ankle grabs the outside of the left leg. Maybe not. Maybe it just hangs out here. Maybe your ankles are crossed. You do you. Good. Breathe into the space between your shoulders. Maybe you lift the elbows a little bit. Maybe the hands come away from the face a little bit more. Maybe not. and easy. Release the arms, release the legs, give it a little shake. And then the other side. So this time the right arm comes under the left and we grab opposite shoulders, backs of the hands or the palms, and then we cross the 
left knee over the right knee or the left ankle over the right ankle. Full twist or not, doesn't matter. And breathe into the shoulder blades on this other side. Feeling the belly inflate on the inhale, deflate on the exhale. Damn, nice and easy. Release out, uncross. So here we're going to kind of sit back. Actually, we're not going to sit back. Hips are about halfway in your chair and either we're going to reach the back of the right hand to the low back. And then we're going to lean back. And so maybe that right hand is up a little bit more. Maybe it's not. Maybe it grabs the back of the chair. And with respect for your body, the hips might move forward, but the body leans back on the chair. This is quite a big stretch for that right shoulder. So breathe into that space. You can always adjust if you need to. And then we're going to bring the right arm, left arm <laughs> up by the left ear. And then we're going to bend that elbow any amount. Keep the chin lifted. So sometimes we do this cow face arms with our um, strap. But today we're kind of using the weight of the body to help us get into this pose. Some people may be able to grab opposite fingertips, some people can't. No big deal. Nice, go ahead and release the left arm, lean it back forward, gently release the right arm, and shake them out a little bit. We'll take it on the other side. So the back of the left hand comes to the low back or the left fingertips reach up for the back of your chair and you lean the body back. Option to stay right here, breathing into that left shoulder. Or the right arm comes up by the right ear and then the elbow bends behind the head, but we keep the chin lifted and we breathe. Always breathing. I wonder how many times I say that during a class. Slow, deep, even breath. We release the right arm, lift it up, release the left arm, a little more shoulder work. So here you can either, I think just grab opposite elbows, and if that's not an option for you, then you grab opposite wrists to give yourself a little bit more space in, um, in your shoulders. And then we're going to see what it feels like to take three shoulder rolls backward. So the shoulders come forward, up, back, and down, and then go the opposite way. Back, up, forward, and down. And then take a minute to notice the cross of your arms because we're going to release the arms and cross them the opposite way. So go ahead and release the arms, stretch them wide, and switch the cross of your arms, grabbing opposite elbows or opposite wrists, and three shoulder rolls. And reverse. Good. Relax. How you feeling? All right, so this one's a little a little um, tricky, so maybe you watch it and decide if you want to do it or not. 
but we're gonna bring the hips all the way forward to the chair and the hands are on the chair and we're gonna just take a little bit of a squat so the hips come off the chair maybe you lower it down use the feet as you need to bring your hips back up to the chair so we'll do that three more times join us or not it doesn't matter hips come forward we lower it down this is a great one for the arms but feel free to use the legs as much as you need or want good one more you got it good all right let's take that figure four position again so right ankle over the left knee or the left ankle and we're going to take that twist again toward our top leg so the back of the left hand comes to that right knee right hand reaches back spread the right toes reach through the right heel low belly in spine long and straight and we're breathing slowly untwist uncross recross and we'll retwist. So the back of the right hand to the left knee, left hand reaches back, we twist to the left, spread the left toes, reach through the left heel, strong spine, and breathing. And gently untwist same thing but we're going to um, add a little forward fold so right ankle over the left ankle or left right ankle over the left knee so maybe you just come forward with the forearms on the leg maybe the torso drapes but find your forward fold where you can let the head and neck hang heavy gets us a little bit deeper into that right hip so if it doesn't feel okay just stay upright good hands come back up to that right leg and lift yourself all the way up uncross the right leg recross the left leg either over the knee or the ankle doesn't matter left foot stays flexed lengthen the spine hinge forward and find your forward fold over that left leg and easy bring it back up uncross take a minute notice how you're feeling we'll do a little more twisting so if you have a block or a footstool you may want that here if bringing the right foot to the seat of your chair is not an option for you if that's just like not happening I invite you to bring your right foot up onto the highest setting of your block or on a footstool, a book, anything that can bring the earth up to your right foot would be perfect. And we are just going to twist away. So maybe that either the right arm stays straight and you twist to the left or that right elbow pushes into the right knee and you twist that way so either foot on a block or the chair and we're twisting to the left Gently 
Envy, release out. And we'll take that on the other side. So either the left foot travels to the seat of the chair or to your block and you twist to the right. I'm just offering options so you can do whatever works best in your body. Twisting to the right here and breathing. Good. Gently release out. Same thing. So we're either going to put that right foot on the seat of our chair and hug that right knee in or the right foot comes to a block or a, a footstool, whatever works. And we're going to lift the left leg, flex the foot, reach out through the heel and lower. Inhale, left leg straightens and lifts. Exhale, it lowers three more times. Last one, you got this. Good. Release out, take it on the other side. So the left foot to your block or the seat of your chair, doesn't matter. And lift and lower. Couple more. out and move your block away and we're going to move into the standing portion of our class today so we're going to stand to the side of our chair either side doesn't matter and we're going to just come into tadasana which is mountain pose so the feet have a little bit of space in between them the pelvis is tilted under the shoulders are directly over the hips, hips over the knees, knees over the ankles. Maybe shoulders come back and down, low belly drawn in, heart lifted slightly, and the head just balances right over the heart. The palms can turn forward. Maybe you lower your gaze or close your eyes and just feel this perfect posture. Maybe you lean the weight a little to the right, a little to the left, and then find your center. Maybe the weight comes a little more forward on the feet to the balls of the feet, to the backs of the feet. And then you find that center point for the whole body. Maybe call to mind your intention, your dedication, or your mantra as we stand in mountain pose and breathe. Good. Release the arms. And we're just, and you can hold on to the chair here if that feels um, safer for you. Or you can, we're just gonna bend the knees slightly and straighten them. Bend the knees a little and straighten. Bend and straighten. And then maybe we bend and we hold it. So this is chair pose. Hands can be on the hips, hand can stay on the chair, arms can go forward or up by the ears. Maybe one arm up by the ear, the other arm holding on to the chair. We're just firing up the legs a little bit here. Good, stand it up, release the arms. And we'll take tree pose, challenge our balance a little bit today. So we're standing to the side of the chair. Whatever foot is next to the side of your chair, I want you to imagine 
rooting down through the big toe mound, little toe mound, inner and outer heel. Find a little spot to stare at a few feet in front of you on the earth, something still. And then uh, bend the left knee and, and point the left knee out to the left as much as possible while the hips stay pointing forward. So that left foot can act as a kickstand. Stay right here if this is a balance challenge for you. Or the left foot comes to the right calf and you play with your balance here. You don't have to let go. You can do whatever feels good with your arms. <laughs> or the left foot comes up to the right thigh. All trees are beautiful, so you do whichever tree pose works best for you. Find your center, draw everything to the midline of your body. So everything's drawing to the midline. That'll help with your balance. So we'll staring at your still spot on the floor. Release out. Lower that left foot to the chit to the floor, and we'll take it on the other side. Take tree pose on the other side. So we root down through the four corners of the left foot. Find our spot to stare at. Bend the right knee out to the right. Hips stay forward, and remember your options: kick stand calf or inner thigh. We just want to avoid the right foot being on our knee, on that left knee, because your knee does not like that. Find your focus. Wobbles are normal, natural, shaking maybe even a little bit, and if you fall out of tree pose, you just get back in. All trees fall at some point, right? You would definitely rather them fall naturally than to be cut down by man. They've been cutting down tons of trees around here to build houses and it's so sad. But I guess we need houses too. All right. I've gone off on a tangent. Release out nice and slow, gentle. Maybe shake both legs. And we'll take a standing side bend. So I'm going to stand back here a little bit so you can see me more of my head. So the hips are, or the feet are about hip width distance apart. We're going to inhale both arms up by the ears. And your option here is for the left, right fingertips to grab the left wrist, and then you take a side bend over to the right. If that doesn't work for you, that right hand can come down by your right hip and kind of push into the right hip as you take a side bend over to the right. You do what works. Root down through that left foot. And inhale back through center, switch the grip. So now the left fingertips grab the right wrist and you side bend over to the left. Always an option for that left hand to stay on the left hip to give you a little bit more support. Good, inhale it up. One more to each side. Side bend to the right. Inhale it up and side bend to the left. Inhale it up and release the arms down. So we're going to kind of repeat that flow a couple times that we did earlier seated in the chair. So we're going to inhale the arms out to the side, palms up. Inhale the arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center release again. Lift it up and down. Now we're going
gonna add that back bend standing. So the arms come out, they come up, interlace the fingers, put the palms facing up to the sky, root down through the feet, draw the belly in, and find any kind of back bend that feels good to you. Inhale it up, release the arms down. One more time. Inhale, arms out to the side and up. Interlace the fingers the opposite way. Palms point up to the ceiling. And safely, any kind of little micro back bend that works for you. And bring it up. Release it down. All right. So let's take... What are we gonna do here? So let's do the standing opposite elbows or opposite wrists. And we'll take those three shoulder rolls backward. And forward. Extend the arms wide. We're going to change the cross of the arms and take those shoulder rolls again. Good. Release the arms. And we're going to take um, the right foot up to the seat of our chair. And see how that feels for you. So that right knee is pointing straight up. And we're going to inhale both arms straight up by the ears. And then we're going to see what it feels like to find any kind of forward fold here. So maybe that right hand comes to the seat of the chair. Left hand can come to the left leg. If you still have your block handy, you can bring that over on whatever setting feels nice to you, or maybe the hand travels to the earth. Doesn't matter. There's no competition here. There's no expectation. It's your practice. Breathing. Without lifting up, we're gonna bring that right foot to meet the left foot for a standing forward fold. So again, you can be using your block. You can keep the hands on the thighs, the shins, the, or you come all the way to a forward fold. You do what works, but play with this standing forward fold. And breathing. Good. Hand comes back to the chair, hand to the thigh, whatever it takes to lift your And we'll switch to the other side of our chair to take that on the left side. So now the left foot comes to the seat of our chair. The left toes are pointing to the left side wall. Hips are squared forward, knees pointing up. Inhale, arms up by the ears, and exhale. Find a forward fold that works for you. This is a perfectly acceptable forward fold. Maybe the hand comes to that block, the shin, the foot, the floor, doesn't matter. lifting the torso too much, bring that left foot to meet the right foot and find a forward fold supported in any way that feels right for you. And gently rise it up. And we'll take, we'll take one down dog with the chair. 
So hands on the back of the chair, walk the feet back. Bring all kinds of length into the spine. Keep the knees bent as much as you need or they're straight or you bend and straighten one at a time. More concerned about the length in the spine than what's going on with the legs. Gray of your spine. Feel all that length. And gently lift yourself. We'll do a little neck stretch. Well, it's not really a stretch some isometric movement with the neck. So we're gonna bring the into your forward, to your forehead, and we're gonna push the forehead into the hand, the hand into the forehead. So we're creating some tension in the neck. Nothing crazy, just gentle pressure. Head into hand, hand into head. Nice and easy. Release out. Then we're going to take the palm of the left hand to the back of the head. Same thing. Gentle pressure. Head into hand. Hand into head. Creating tension in the neck. Breathing. out. And then we're going to take the palm of the right hand to the side, the right side of the head. Same thing. Head into hand, hand into head. This is another great one for when you have a crick in your neck. We're working all sides of the neck here. Good. Gently release. Left hand to the left side of the head. Pressure, gentle pressure, head into hand, hand into head. Breathing. And gently release. And it's your much deserved Shavasana. So Either find an easy seated position with your perfect posture. You can lie on the floor or on your couch or your bed, whatever works. But just take a few minutes to get yourself situated there. And then settle into stillness. Lower your gaze or close your eyes. And I have a reading from Brianna Weist. I'm not sure where I found this, but it goes like this. Self-care is often a very unbeautiful thing. It's making a spreadsheet of your debt and enforcing a morning routine and cooking yourself healthy meals and no longer just running from your problems and calling the distraction a solution. It's often doing the ugliest thing that you have to do, like sweat through another workout or tell a toxic friend you don't want to see them anymore or get a second job so you can have a savings account or figure out a way to accept yourself so that you're not constantly exhausted from trying to be everything all the time and then needing to take a deliberate mandated breaks from living to do a basic thing like drop some oil into a bath and read a magazine and turn your phone off for the day. A world in which self-care has to be such a trendy topic is a world that is sick. Self-care should not be something we resort to because we are so absolutely exhausted that we need some reprieve 
from our own relentless internal pressure. True self-care is not salt baths and chocolate cake. don't need to regularly escape from and that often takes doing the thing you least want to do. It often means looking your failures and disappointments square in the eye. It's not satiating your immediate desires, it's letting go. It's choosing new. It's disappointing some people. It's sac it is making sacrifices for others. It's living a way that other people won't, so maybe you can live in a way that other people can't. It's letting yourself be normal, regular, unexceptional. It's sometimes having a dirty kitchen and deciding your ultimate goal in life isn't going to be having abs and keeping up with your fake friends. It's deciding how much of your anxiety comes from not actualizing your latent potential and how much comes from the way you were being trained to think before you even knew what was happening. If you find yourself having to regularly indulge in consumer self-care, it's because you're disconnected from actual self-care, which has very little to do with treating yourself and a whole lot to do with parenting yourself and making choices for your long-term wellness. It's no longer using your hectic and unreasonable life as justification for self-sabotage in the form of liquor and procrastination. It's learning how to stop trying to fix yourself and start trying to take care of yourself. And maybe finding that taking care lovingly attends to a lot of the problems you were trying to fix in the first place. It means being the hero of your own life, not the victim. It means rewiring what you, what you have until your everyday life isn't something you need therapy to recover from. It's no longer choosing a life that looks good over a life that feels good. It's giving the hell up on some goals so you can care about others. It's being honest, even if that means you aren't universally liked. It's meeting your own needs so you aren't anxious and dependent on other people. It's becoming the person you know you want and are meant to be. Someone who knows that salt baths and chocolate cakes are ways to enjoy life, not escape from it. Gently begin to deepen your breath. Invite some small movements to your fingers and to your toes. And as you're ready, reach the arms up by the ears, the legs out in front. Give yourself a big stretch in both directions. And then relax it all back down. Press the palms together in front of the heart center as our gesture of closing this sacred time you've made for yourself, this sacred time we've shared together. Thank yourself for that. Thank yourself for your self-care. And I invite you in the next week or so to be mindful of how often you're trying to escape from your life and what adjustments may not be easy, but may benefit you to make your life a little bit more the way you want it to be. My soul honors your soul. I commend the place in you where the spirit resides. I admire the place in you that is of love, light, truth, and peace, because it's also within me and in sharing these things we are united. We are one. Namaste.
Great job. Hope you're feeling good, and I hope you have a great week. And I will see you next, not next week. Maybe even not the week after that. So next week's the holiday on the 5th. And then I'm on vacation the week after that. So it may be a minute before I'm back. Um, but you can always go and watch the other classes again, either on YouTube or here. All right. Bye.